Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be looking at JT Miller and where he may go. But first, oh man, we had Kane and Taze, the last two trade videos we did. And I'm still talking to people on the Facebook pages and in my comment section about Tays and Kane and where they may go. I, I'm amazed by how there's so many different opinions and thoughts about different players. Some people absolutely loved the idea of Taze coming over at the deadline for half retained. Some people hated the idea. There's a lot of discussion about it. Kane as well. Most people were all over Kane. It was pretty cool to do. So we're going to do the same thing with JT Miller. Uh, we did one before the C on the trade deadline last year, uh, looking at some teams that might pick up JT Miller at the deadline, which didn't happen. And uh, now we're going to go. He still hasn't been traded. It's the summer. We're going to look at a couple articles that gives us an indication that he likely will be traded. Um, we'll look at JT Miller himself. And we'll look at the Vancouver Canucks, what they might want. And we're going to do something really interesting this time. We're going to be looking at a three-way trade possibility. Um, so with a, with a team that could give Vancouver what they really need on their roster, while giving the other teams an opportunity to provide things that they can give to Chicago and to Vancouver to be able to make this trade work. Because what Van the one thing that Vancouver really needs is a very difficult thing to find. And one team in particular actually has it. So we'll look at that. Make sure you sub up everybody. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about JT Miller. If you'd want him on your team. If you like the teams that we're sending him to. What his value is and all of those sort of things like that. All part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Which you can watch in the evenings. I do about two a week quite often with Peyton on the radio and myself. We talk all things hockey and the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, don't you know? Okay, here, let's look at the article. What's next for JT Miller and the Canucks? As free, free agency dwindles down, most of the big name targets are off the market. Salary cap space drying up around the league and the likelihood of Vancouver Canucks trading JT Miller doesn't seem as high as it was a couple of weeks ago. However, and this is what I think, it's crucial for the Canucks to address the issue before the start of training camp. I believe so too, with the two parties being incredibly distant on a possible extension. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Everything I've read about this, including in this article here by Tanjo Perlwall, uh, tells me that it's just not looking too good. The team at uh, Jim Rutherford pushed back against the impatient market, stating that the team has until the trade deadline to decide with Miller having a contract extension or not. I suppose you do. Now, I'm going to call you out on this, Mr. Davidson, and I know you're watching. Why wouldn't you be watching, right? If you're in a playoff spot, come trade deadline, with JT Miller, are you honestly going to back out on him? Or are you going to let him walk for free? Do you, do you really want to put your sponsors in a position and the ownership as well and go to them and say, oh, yeah, we, we know we're in a playoff spot, but we got to get value for JT Miller. So he's not signing, so we're just going to trade him anyways. I That doesn't happen very often. I think one time St. Louis did it with Shattenkirk. But once you get to that point, ownership's going to be like, nah, nah, nah. You can figure out another way, thank you very much, because we're getting that playoff money. With that being said, this is incredible posturing by Rutherford, which seems to me to be the same. In other words, you got to make it look like you're in no hurry, right? Otherwise, you put yourself in poor leverage. If you don't know what leverage means, that means what you... If people think you're desperate, they're not going to offer so much. You have to make it look like or act like or feel like like you could sit on it. No big deal. But I don't I don't buy it at all, and neither does the writer of this article. No matter how much Rutherford postures the market, 
One thing is for sure, the team cannot back themselves into a corner, heading into the regular season with Miller on the roster without an extension. It's going to be hard to get an extension done, says Mr. Elliot Friedman. And I agree. I think it's going to be impossible. They're capped out. They need help on their defense, which we're going to look at. And um, they have a lot of, they have more forwards than they do have defensemen. He's a 29 year old dude who's probably going to be looking for a long term contract and a lot of money. Uh, the most popular team at the deadline was the Rangers, but they don't look like they're in it anymore. Anyways, I wanted to look at that part of the article to basically get a feel here that there is more than what Mr. Davidson is saying, I believe. I think it can get very uncomfortable for Vancouver, the fan base, their sponsors, and ownership the longer this goes. So let's look at another article here. Here's a big issue for Vancouver, and I should tell you who is this person that wrote this. Anthony Skultor from the Daily Goal Horn. I love this guy. I love this, actually, publication. Check it out. It's great. Uh, free agency came and went, and uh, Goudreau went. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes, who were in, they, they got Brent Burns and Pacioretty. Well, I didn't get any calls, Canucks GM Pat. Patrick Alvin said yesterday, he was our best player last year. Teams are kicking the tires. Basically saying that nobody was really serious about giving an offer that they wanted. Uh, now, the speculation has been that they are looking for three to four pieces What appears to be a trade is inevitable will most likely occur during the season. Again, it says that I talk way too long and they may get way too long. They may not get max value. And apparently they're looking for three to four pieces for Miller. And that said that somewhere in here. Remember, I do this all on the fly. Yeah, anyways, I know it says it in there. They had, they're had they looking for three or four pieces, which is a lot to ask for a guy that, first of all, needs to have a long-term contract after this year. Um, so in order for them to get that, they're pretty much going to have to find a team that's willing to give them a long-term contract. And I don't even think they are going to get that. But you might as well ask high, right? Because if you don't ask high, you may not get at all. So I don't think they're going to get four pieces, maybe three. And as we look at these, we'll see the difficulties that they have to get that, especially the specific pieces they're probably looking for. Here's the Vancouver Canucks here. And their roster and what they may be looking for. JT Miller, of course, is a centerman. He's also a left winger. He's done, he's played both very, very well. So they have a guy named Elias Peterson who is supposed to be a center that's playing left wing right now. I am positive they want him to be playing at center for the amount of money that they're going to be giving him in the long run. He's way younger than JT Miller, six years younger. And they also have Bo Horvat, who is their captain, by the way. And I hear a lot of talk about JT Miller is the real captain and all of these sort of things like that. And it's probably true because JT Miller is the type of guy that takes over a room. And actually, I think that's a problem for the Vancouver Canucks because I don't think that JT Miller is a guy that they want to be taken over the room. They want to give it over to these young guys and build around them. So 29 years old, $5 million a year for this year, and he had 99 points in 80 games. If they let him go into the new next season and he looks like he's heading for those kind of numbers again, I guess in that way, they might be able to get max return for them. But also, they will have to realize that they're going to have to pay him an awful lot. You're probably looking for 8 to $9 million for six to seven years for JT Miller. That's probably what he's asking. And the issue Vancouver has is, if we look down here, 
is, first of all, they're pretty much capped out. And they've got like guys like Luke Shen playing right D on the top four, and that's just not good. Luke Shen's not a top four defenseman. Sorry, everybody. He's not. 32 years old. He's not getting better either. Neither is Dermot. Neither is Kyle Burroughs. They have a defenseman problem in a big, bad way here. And if they pay JT Miller, that means somebody else has got to go from their forward group. And honestly, I don't think they want anyone out of their forward group besides Tanner Pearson to go. And he's probably not going to bring you back a very good defenseman. Maybe Connor Garland might a little bit. But, and we'll look at that down in the, in the future as we look at all the teams as well. Him possibly being part of a package or what have you. So, as we can see, right D seems to be the biggest problem. Uh, if you look in the minors, they have one right D that may, you know, Jet Wu may down the road. I mean, he's he really hasn't hit it out of the park ever since they drafted him in 2018. Like, let's look at this. And this has been a big, a big problem is defensemen haven't panned out. Eight points in 42 games for what was supposed to be an offensive defenseman at 22 years old. That kid is a ways away yet. And the only other one is Noah Juleson, who's never been able to make it in the NHL. They are in bad shape for right-hand defensemen. When you get into their prospects, look at this. Lefty, lefty, lefty. right, One right deep. He must be smacking his lips, 140th overall in 2021. If you're a right D and you were even picked late in Vancouver, you just may play in the NHL the way things are going here. So with that being said, right defense is a very hard thing to find. So the first thing, looking at all the teams that I, when I went through and I did all my due diligence, as I like to say, that came up as a possibility was the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, you may say, as I said as well, Chicago sure doesn't want JT Miller. They just traded away their whole team in hopes of becoming the worst team in the land next year so they can get like a Bedard or a Michkov, preferably Bedard. So they're not going to want JT Miller. However, this is going to come in handy as we look at other things down the road. We have Connor Murphy. The problem is he had concussion issues. The other one is Brian McCabe, who can also play right side. Wouldn't be Seth Jones. I don't believe that Seth Jones is available at all. They've already made that quite clear. So depending on what happens with Connor Murphy, that would have to be an injury issue that they'd have to take care of. Uh, make sure that everything is fine and his concussion problems are over and all of those sort of things like that. But that being said, if he is, they can look at that. So we'll look at Jake McCabe as a possibility, right? They get Jake McCabe from Chicago and maybe somebody like Mackenzie Entwistle up the middle to fill the third, third and fourth line spot. And Chicago gets JT Miller whom they use to get assets for as well, preferably a first-round pick. They're going to be looking for a first-round pick. They want first for days, first, first, first. And the said team that does get part of this deal also says Vancouver, sends Vancouver another asset to go with it. So that's what we're going to be looking at to start out with. Tell me what you think, Chicago fans. What do you think about getting... Uh, a first round pick and maybe a little bit more for Jake McCabe and somebody like Mackenzie Entwistle. Next, we're the, so the first team we're going to look at that could be part of this three way deal, and there is teams in the future here that don't I don't think need a three three way deal. This is kind of an order of I think the possibilities that could happen. So the Detroit Red Wings. And the reason why I bring the Detroit Red Wings into the mix here is JT Miller can play center and left, and that's huge. And they love guys like that that can play many positions. If you notice that, look at all the guys. Left wing, right wing, left wing, right wing, center, left wing, left wing, right wing. Cop can play all three. 
they try to find t players that can play many positions for the most part. So they would like that. Now, the other thing is, is there has been continuous talk about Tyler Bertuzzi uh, not being in their future plans. Maybe he's asking for too much money. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure about why he keeps on coming up. Maybe they were a little upset that he didn't get, uh, he couldn't go to Canada because he wouldn't get the shot for COVID or who knows. I don't know. But it has just been over and over and over again. Now, Vancouver might be, I don't know if they'd want to go down the road of another Bertuzzi again. Uh, hopefully that's all washed away. But they could look at Tyler Bertuzzi going to Vancouver in this deal. So they get Jake McCabe for the right side or preferably Connor Murphy. Personally, I love Connor Murphy. His defensive analytics are beautiful. So is McCabe's, by the way. McCabe, Tyler Bertuzzi for JT Miller and maybe Entwistle. Detroit sends Bertuzzi, since they're not going to sign him anyways, and he's going to have to be signed at the end of the year. And their first in either 2023 or 2024 to the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, they can also send a prospect as well to make up for the fact that they're losing Entwistle. They would have to be huge on JT Miller here. And I think it's possible that they could. Um, I, I think the whole, yeah, I get the feeling that the Tyler Bertuzzi situation is an unfortunate disconnect, but they still need a player in there. They don't want to be getting prospects here. Detroit is looking to get good and get good now. And there's another thing. JT Miller is a player that is likes to take over a room. He's a very forceful voice in the room. The big knock on Dylan Larkin is that he's not that. I don't even think that Dylan Larkin, he, you don't take his captaincy away. He is a captain that do, you, you follow his lead and what he does on the ice. That's what Dylan Larkin is. Every You want to be like Dylan Larkin. But JT Miller could be the voice of this room, and I think it would work out really well for him in Detroit for that to be, do so. So if Tyler Bertuzzi is already not going to be signed, and you can get JT Miller for this left side, who can also play center if Andrew Kopp gets injured, if he's not working out in that second center spot, you can put him in the middle and Kopp on the left wing. You can mix and match a lot here. So Chicago would get Detroit's first, which is risky for Detroit if they're going to have as bad a season as last year. However, I don't think they think that at all, especially if they get JT Miller. You could also protect it, right? Top 10 protected, something of that nature. And, you know, a prospect that maybe isn't working out so much like Gustav Lindstrom, who hasn't been bad, but I think that they could afford, especially with Edvinson coming up, Volander. They have a lot of defensemen coming up. They could trade Gustav Lindstrom as well. Mix and match that. Vancouver gets Tyler Bertuzzi. They get McCabe. Chicago gets Lindstrom. And the first round pick. And Detroit gets Mr. JT Miller. What do you think, Detroit fans? Mix and match any way you want, too. Tell me in the comment section what you think the value of JT Miller is. What do you think that Chicago should give up, Vancouver should give up, Detroit should give up? I'm just throwing it out there. You tell me what you think. All right, Detroit fans, sub up. Follow me in the comment section. It helps me a lot. Hit that like button too. Like it. Sub it. It really helps out the channel. The more subs you get, the more these fine frolic videos get out to the land. All right. Next. Calgary Flames. Yes, the Calgary Flames. Now it's going to say like, well, they're in division and all that stuff like that. Well, uh, we look at the articles that we just listened to. I know Jim Rutherford is making it sound like this is not a big deal here, but it's a big deal. 
JT Miller, if they keep him on the roster until the deadline, they're in a very difficult spot because I just can't see any owner saying you're letting them trade a guy when you're in, like that when you're in a playoff spot. I just can't see it. If they're going to move him for optics purposes, and by optics I mean for the way it looks to the fans, to the sponsors, to the owner, everything, if they can't sign him now and it doesn't look like they're going to, it really doesn't, moving him is the way to go. And at this point, I don't think you should be shying away from even within your own division. Because if that's the best package you can get, it's probably the best move to make. So, again, in this case, I think doing the Chicago thing is probably this three-way deal with Chicago is the best way this is going to work. Um. And, and remember, all of this is also in contingent with the contingents with the fact that JT Miller is, says he's willing to sign long term with any of these teams. Calgary Flames now they've got Huberto and Uyghur, and they don't know if any of them are going to sign yet. They they're not a hundred percent sure that they're going to sign long term. If they bring JT Miller, they're not a hundred percent sure too. But out of all of these guys, they may. One of them might sign long-term at least, and they could be very good for this year. At least go out with a big hurrah before you, you know, it would be devastating, honestly, if they go into the playoffs with Huberto, Uyghur, and JT Miller, and none of them sign. It would be devastating. But if he's willing to sign long-term in Calgary right now, I could see, again, Chicago Blackhawks, they trade him there. They get Jake McCabe or Connor Murphy if his concussion issues are over. They feel that they're safe, that it's okay, that he's going to be okay. But we'll say Jake McCabe for now. Calgary Flames trade their first to Chicago. And that's what Chicago is looking for. They're looking for first-round picks. They have now $9 million for this year. All of this is going to get tricky. $9 million for this year, but we know that eventually they're going to have to sign Uyghur and they're going to have to sign that. But look, look at after next year. They're wide open. After next year, they have... Huberto coming off. Lucic coming off. Mackenzie Weger coming off. Whole bunch of restricted free agents. They have a lot of cap space next year. $36 million to fill all these spots with. Now, if they could get JT Miller here, and he already is going to sign, there's one. Maybe Weger's another one. One of these, hopefully, will sign with you. So they send their first... To Chicago. What am I doing? And they have JT Miller to play in the middle instead of Backlund. Backlund comes down here with Lucic and Dubé. Lucic may resign next year, but it certainly won't be $5 million. So they'll have some room that way. They give Dylan Dubé... And Oliver Shillington in the first round draft pick to Chicago. So Vancouver will get McCabe, Shillington, and Dylan Dubé. And we'll say that Vancouver gives a second to Chicago as well. So they get a first and second out of the deal. Not too shabby for Chicago. For basically just doing a three-way trade. And for Calgary, like I said, they might have a chance this year. You put JT Miller with Mangio Pani, Huberto Lindholm Toffoli, and JT Miller, Coleman, Mangio Pani. Now it looks like a decent lineup, and you've got a fantastic defense. Take Shilington out of there. they got a lot of young guys. They could use Valimaki. Tanev should be coming back. That would make a that would that defense would be amazing as long if you can sign these guys they actually come out pretty good with uh, 
Kachuk leaving. The question is, can they sign him? But I think Calgary's got to try to get all these players they can and hope at least one of them signs and then rebuild this roster. If they can get more than one to sign, great. But this team, I've heard it over and over again, there will be no rebuild. I don't think they'll ever rebuild in Calgary. They will always be trying to add free agents and put the best team on the ice that they possibly can. Calgary fans, and maybe you don't like that. But if you can get JT Miller fully signed, there's a guy signed right off the bat. Maybe if you get JT Miller fully signed, Jonathan Huberdeau goes, hmm, these guys are serious here. Imagine Huberdeau feeling, feeding JT Miller. I mean, did we look at JT Miller's stats from last year? 32 goals. And he didn't have somebody like Huberto feeding him like that. 99 points and 32 goals. Imagine if he had Huberto feeding him. Those kind of, that way he could put up all those points again. You could have a rocking line up here. You know, and maybe Mackenzie Weger as well. I don't know if you can fit them all in, but you give it your best shot. And this team is pretty, is not too shabby. What do you think? Chicago fans, Calgary fans, Vancouver fans. What do you think about that return? Um, I'd say for Vancouver, if they can get Shillington, who I really like, by the way, and he can play right D, by the way. He can play right. Uh, if they get McCabe, Shillington, Dylan Dubé, now they have a defense, and Dylan Dubé can play you know, anywhere up on that roster. The other one we have in here, and this is something I'm going to have you think about, is Vancouver could add Garland into the mix. And I didn't have time to see what that would look like. But you put Garland in the mix on top of that, and you can mix and match a lot. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what what would you do if you had Garland and JT Miller? What would you offer? Who would get what? Should be interesting. Can't wait to hear from you, Calgary fans. Sub up to the channel because it really helps me a lot. Trying to get to a thousand. And uh, make sure you hit that like button if you like it. Nashville Predators is next. And again, this is one where we are going to go again to Chicago. Trade JT Miller to Chicago, and they're going to get Jake McCabe and Entwistle, something of that nature, back from Chicago. And because I don't see a right D going here, Nashville. Nashville can't afford to give up a right defenseman here. But if you get Jake McCabe or Connor Murphy, you're getting a pretty solid right D. And end whistle. And now, Nashville, who I who has shown already, they're, they're not rebuilding here. They're going for it the best that they possibly can. They would get JT Miller, who would play left wing in this circumstance. In fact, most of these circumstances, he's going to play left wing. But he can play center if Ryan Johansson or Mikel Granlin goes down. Nashville sends their first round pick to Chicago. Vancouver sends a second to Chicago. So they get a first and second in this deal for Jake McCabe and Entwistle. And Vancouver gets Eli Toivonen back in, ret back in return as well. Because Entwistle will go here. So they get McCabe, Tolvanen, And Prokoff. I really like Prokoff. Luke Prokoff. Right defenseman coming up 6'4", 217. He's 20 years old. He should be ready soon. I like him a lot. You may like somebody else. Tell me what you think of the comment section of other prospects that Nashville might have that they would give up in this situation. But that's a top-line prospect, a right-wing defenseman, and... A pretty killer guy who's had a little bit of difficulty in Eli Toivonen to play along on the wing there. 
for J.T. Miller in the second. Chicago gets a first in the second, and Nashville gets J.T. Miller. It feels like it's a little light. It feels like Nashville might have to give up a little more here. I may go as far as I want Philip T instead of uh, I want Tomasino instead of Eli Torvenin. Now, if that's the case, Vancouver comes out huge. I love Philip T Tomasino, and maybe they do that right now because Nashville doesn't as as good as I think Tomasino is going to be. Nashville's in win now mode. And JT Miller would sure go a long way to win now. I, I just think JT Miller has an attitude that fits in this Nashville lineup as well. Again, they would have to sign him long term. We'll look at the uh, let's look at their uh, cap space. It's four million. So they would have to make room somehow to do this. Uh, I don't think Toy. Tomasino is only making 863. Vancouver might have to take a contract back, actually, even on top of it, in order for them to have this work. Um, that would be a difficult move. 1.45. Miller's only making $5 million this year. Actually, they can do it. Eli Toivonen can work. So I would say Eli Toivonen, first-round pick to Nashville. And they get Jake McCabe and a young left winger in Vancouver. What do you think, guys? Nashville fans, Vancouver fans, sub up and let me know. Next. New Jersey Devils. This is the one that's been most, like, probably, I heard it, I've heard it quite a bit. And I first, when I first heard it, I thought, I don't know about that. But then the more I looked at it, the more I thought, you know what, this, this is really possible. And they don't need Chicago in this deal. And I think New Jersey can give the best offer and still be okay for JT Miller. He would play the left side. He wouldn't be playing center. He would have to sign a long-term contract. New Jersey does, I believe, have the cap space to accommodate this, especially if they trade the two players that I think they're going to in this deal. I think it's going to be Severson, who's a UFA after next year. So he's a right defenseman, but they have a lot of young guys coming up. They got Malcolm Madulin coming up. They have several young players coming up to fill that role. And they just got Marino as well, who can play top four. He was playing top four. He's only 25 years old. Sign him to a long-term deal. I, I personally, and I know a lot of New Jersey fans don't like Severson. I really like him. I think they like him in Vancouver. So Severson and, oops, wrong way. And the left winger that would be, he'd be taking the spot of would be Sharon Govich. Sharon Govich and Severson. And New Jersey can fit that under the cap for this year, and they're going to have to sign him long-term down the road. Now, they're also going to have to sign a lot of other guys. They still got to sign Jesper Bratt to a deal. So that would make it a little difficult. What do they got for cap space here? Eight million in cap space. But you got rid of Sharon Govich. And you got rid of Severson. And he's only making five. Next year they have thirty six million in cap space. Which of course they're going to have to sign a lot of players to fill some holes, but he would be one of the holes that you would fill. I like the deal. And I think JT Miller would fit into that lineup really well. A uh, big voice with a lot of young players working with Palat, who he, by the way, played with but as well. He played with Andre Palat. 
So they know each other already. This seems like a pretty solid possibility here. But it's not my number one pick, believe it or not. But it's something that I think would work. You put Marino, you put Hamilton playing top pairing minutes. Marino up here on the second right D. And like I said, they have Kevin Ball. He's a lefty. Mac Shakir Makamadoulin, who might be a little bit of, of a ways away. But uh, Ball has already played a little bit. And Riley Walsh, he should be ready to fill in a spot there in the 5-6. So they got, they got ways that they can fill that roster. And that's a killer top six. Palat, Hughes, Bratt. Miller, Heischer, Mercer. Wow. And then Johansson, Paula Tatar. I mean, that is one deep roster all the way through. Love it. Love it. Wouldn't be a bad deal. I don't like the idea of getting rid of Damon Severson, but he's going to be ponying up about 7 or $8 million probably next year. Somebody's going to give him that, and he's 27 years old on a long-term contract. Now, Miller is also going to be wanting a longer term contract as well. So you have a choice. You take Miller or keep Severson when you already have defensemen coming up. I don't think there's, oh, well, actually you do have, you have Alexander Holtz coming up as well. So you're going to have a crowded roster either way. Hmm. Tell me what you think, New Jersey Devils fans. Do you need them? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Vancouver fans, do you like that deal? I think Vancouver would love that deal. I would hope. Maybe you don't. Chicago, you get nothing. Nothing. All right. Next. The New York Islanders with no cap room whatsoever. <laughs> and no right defenseman. Unless the talk has been that, the, that they've had a hard time getting Noah Dobson signed. And that they would trade Noah Dobson for Miller. I just can't see that happening at all. I think what would happen here with Scott Mayfield, who's going to be a UFA next year, would be part of the deal. Anthony Beauvillier, since they're not going to need that forward anyways, and I know it's like, can we get older? Do we have to get older? I know Islanders fans are going to lose their mind already in this with this as it is, but Barzal needs a player that can create to play with. And JT Miller could definitely do it. Yeah, I, I tell you right now, if they don't find a creative player with play with Barzal before the end of next year, I don't think he's coming back. I don't. And I don't blame him. They've had long enough to find a creative player to play with Barzal. He goes into the offensive zone and does, and it looks like all, all his teammates all look like they don't know what the hell he's doing. That's why they play Zach Parise with him. Because if he can creep up with him at all, at least he knows what he's doing. But they need somebody better than that. Parise is going to be 39 years old. So I know you're going to have no youngsters left, but I do believe it'll be Beauvillier, Scott Mayfield. A first-round draft pick next year and maybe Kiefer Bellows. And they're going for it. They're going for it. You, you actually have a, a second line, a first line now. You know, you have two full lines. Wallstrom can go up with Barzal and JT Miller, finally. It's the way it should be. And uh, Palmieri, Paggio, and whatever. I still don't think this lineup is going to make it anyways. I think it's sooner or later, These they have to realize, I love their top four on defense, and Ilya Sorokin will probably keep them in. But this team's probably not winning a cup even if they get JT Miller. However, I don't think Lamarillo and the ownership, they don't see that at all, and they're just going to keep on banging away at it. And I definitely could see them. I have this as the number one play. If they don't go for Kadri, which I think would be a bigger mistake, honestly, because Kadri can't play the wing very well. Matthew Barz Barzal would have to play the wing then, and I don't know if he's going to like that too much. But this is my number one play. 
What do you think, Islanders fans? I, I know what I know what you're going to say because I've talked to you about in these videos plenty already and heard the disdain for you getting older and older and older all the time. And I don't blame you, but I do think it could happen. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42.